A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This is episode number 49. And it's all about drilling and machining the parts for the saddle tank mounting brackets, which is quite an easy job. But surprisingly, it is not always easy to get this right. All of the holes drilled in these parts need to correspond with each other and not be in the wrong place. This is a package that came from Blackgate's Engineering full of parts that I need for this job and others. I think it's really good how everything is hand wrapped and you don't cut yourself on the sharp edges. As I showed in the previous episode, these are the two brass parts that I'm going to use to actually mount the tank to the steel uprights. Also in the previous episode, I showed the making of a mahogany template, which I will also use in a future episode. There's one part of this job that will be quite tricky to do single-handedly. This episode's like a walk in the park, everything's nice and easy. What I'm doing is transferring the holes in the piece of sheet steel onto the mounting bracket. First of all, making sure that the upright pieces of steel are at 90 degrees to the bracket. As you can see here, I'm using a 90 degree set square for this. What I'm doing in this clip is using a sharp needle file as a scriber through the holes that are drilled in the steel uprights to make marks in the paint of the mounting bracket. Then it's over to the drilling machine and the first thing I'm going to do is use a centre drill to really accurately spot the centre of the hole that is marked on the paint. I didn't bother with a centre punch, although I could have used a centre punch. I wanted to show the fact that when you use a centre drill, you can move it around until you get it exactly in the right place. Then all you have to do is apply a bit more pressure to push the centre drill through the steel. Once a centre drill goes through this thin steel, it does actually chatter slightly. This is not a disadvantage, it just tells you to stop drilling. And that the hole is more than deep enough. The next part of the job is to turn the bracket around and repeat the process at the other side. As you can see, I'm spotting the hole gently first, checking that it's in the right place before I push the drill all the way through. By the way, it's not a good idea to use your finger to move the swarf out of the way, but I like to live dangerously. I live life on the edge. Although it is still a better idea when doing this to use a paintbrush. If you're doing a job like this, take your time and get it right first time, because the alternative is to use a needle file to file the holes into alignment, and I really do not want to do that. By scribing the part into the paint using the method that I've just shown, it is surprisingly easy to get the centre drill exactly in the middle of the hole. And what you're really doing is just drilling on a spot of paint, and if, as you increase the pressure of the centre drill, the paint disappears evenly, then the resultant drilled hole will be in the correct position. After drilling every hole with the centre drill, it's time now to enlarge them using a 3 16ths of an inch diameter twist drill. This is the same twist drill bit that they used to drill the uprights. Once all of the holes are drilled in the mounting bracket, they should be in exactly the same place as in the uprights. All I need to do now is assemble the parts loosely on the bench to see if they fit. Before doing that, I'm using a larger twist drill to thoroughly deburr the holes. This is a really good idea to make sure all the parts sit level. Now it's time to loosely assemble the parts on the bench. And as you can see, everything fits. No filed holes, all the 2BA bolts go all the way through. And when I put the brass blocks in the correct position at the top of the uprights, you can see how they're going to fit. Bear in mind that in this clip you are looking at the mounting assembly on its side. Please don't get confused at this stage. These brass blocks are going to be inside the saddle tank. The important thing at this stage is that the parts fit perfectly squarely. Once these brass blocks are inside the tank, they will act as a support to spread the load. The mounting for these two uprights is going to be made from a piece of brass. This piece of brass, in fact. In this clip, and this is important, I'm marking the brass slightly longer than the top part of the steel. And I'm going to cut the brass angle using my old bandsaw. Even though it's old and not very good quality, it does actually cut quite accurately. But it's not 100%. 
and also I do not want rough sawn edges so once I've cut these two pieces I will be machining them in the milling machine to be perfectly square top and bottom and I should end up with two perfectly matched brass brackets which will need some holes drilling in them both to mount them to the top of the uprights as well as underneath the saddle tank at both sides into the brass blocks. What I'm doing here is supporting the end of the piece of brass so that when the blade goes all the way through it doesn't fall on the floor. One down and one to go. I use the first piece of brass to set the position of the blade to cut the second piece and then I end up with two pieces of brass that are too big. It would look really bad if these two pieces of brass were too short for the uprights so I'm really taking my time to make sure that when I machine them they fit perfectly. Let the machining commence. I'm using a large face cutter for this job. For a couple of reasons. One is it was already fitted into the machine and the other one is it's a very large cutter and it doesn't put a lot of pressure on the work because it has plenty of cutting tips around the edge. A further bonus is with this face cutter the work doesn't get very hot. The chips do that fly off but the work itself remains relatively cool so you don't get an expansion problem. I do have a much newer smaller face cutter than this but to save time I used the one that was in the machine. Once I've machined one side I cleaned it up to get rid of all the burrs and turned it over then I machined the other side. How did I clean it up and get rid of all the burrs? I just touched it lightly on my one inch belt sander which did the job very well. I did exactly the same on the other bracket and as you can clearly see here they are a perfect fit on the uprights. To fix the pieces of brass to the uprights I'm going to use some 2BA hexagon bolts to hold all of the parts together. And as the holes in the brass angle that go through into the uprights are going to be in the same relative position as the bolts that hold the uprights to the main mounting bracket it should look good. What do the two arrows with the question mark in between mean? Well it's just to tell me I haven't cut these to the right length yet. To find out how long these uprights need to be and that will include the thickness of the brass angle which is one eighth of an inch. I will assemble the tank in position on the locomotive and then cut my template to the correct size. This is the same mahogany template that I used to cut the angles at the end of the uprights. I mentioned in the previous episode that I bought more brass angle than I needed. I always like to have plenty of spare parts at the ready. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.